Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you love these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Released in 2016, the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak 15407, the double balance open worked, is exceptionally rare. One of the scarcest modern Royal Oak references, it is a poem in steel and brass and and gold, a gorgeous 41 millimeter stainless steel modern royal oak that features impressive finish and impressive engineering to match. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see this 2016 SIHH novelty has the full form of the 41 millimeter royal oak case. It is broad. The timepiece, 41 millimeters in diameter extending itself generously across the wrist, 51.6 millimeters lug to lug, but if you include these intermediate end links that create a little bit of rigid flare, the actual distance across the wrist here is a meaty 53.9 millimeters. The watch is not thick, however, only 9.9 .9 millimeters thick as I measure it. It can easily slide underneath the cuff. Now you need to get a little bit closer to this watch to truly appreciate what it is all about. We'll give ourselves a bit more light. This is a watch that's hand finished from the outside in. Royal Oaks, regardless of whether they're the 15202 craft art pieces or even a standard 15400 or 15500 feature exquisite case and bracelet finishing. This is where the Royal Oak still holds the advantage over the Nautilus. That perfect expanding bevel black polish down the case, expanding, aligned perfectly across the shoulders of the links. If you look in between the links, you can see the intermediates have polished ends that you would only ever notice if you roll them through the light. The satin finish perfectly aligned across the tops of the links and then on the flank, a contrasting vertical satin finish. The screws themselves in the bracelet, black polished on their heads and every individual link a work of art such that I've seen people try to steal these links from watches, sell the watches with replacement white gold links fashioned and fitted because the steel link is worth more and tougher to finish than a white gold link of equivalent specification. That's how hard it is to finish steel like this. Some people would try to sub in white gold to keep and sell the steel links. The buckle in the modern era is as tough as anything you'll find on the offshore. A combination of blasted and satin finish with twin trigger release. It's very secure when on the wrist and of course it is a sequential closure so close it in the right order. The case, as beautifully rendered as the bracelet itself, you could see the satin finish across the hoods of the case, the hoods of the lugs, the polish that diminishes at the mid-case and expands again on the opposite side, the polished rounded flanks of the octagonal rounded bezel, and you could see the sharp break between the top of the bezel with its satin finish and the polish of the flanks. Now, of course, the watch uses white gold bezel bolts slightly recessed inside the bezel, and a dial featuring ruthenium PVD on a chaptering outboard with hand laid rose gold loomed indices, rose gold hands, full rose gold balance bridge on both sides. It doubles up on both sides. You have a balance bridge. So you have two balances, two hair springs, and of course two bridges. The one on the dial side, solid gold and hand finished. I mean exquisitely hand finished. What I can't overstate is that the reason for this watch's scarcity is production rate. It's not outrageously priced for what you get and all things considered, the finishing of this hand skeletonized, hand beveled, hand polished movement, hand satin finished movement is what slows production of the 15407. So let's talk about the finish here. You're looking at the motion works visible for all the world to see. The watch is 50 meters water resistant, just like a 15400. And you can see the motion works that actually controls the stop seconds function, as well as the setting of the hands. So that's all visible to the naked eye. You can see when I wind the watch, the barrel is mobile and the barrel is open. You can actually see the mainspring slipping. It's a bridle style automatic that cannot be overwound. All of the screw heads are black polished with chamfered slots and all of the bridges and plates are hand skeletonized and then mirrored chamfer inside. The watch does not shy away from interior angles. I wish I could get closer, but you can see how many interior sharp cleft angles there are inside the balance bridge on both sides of the watch, as well as inside the skeletonized form of the bridges and the plates. Interior angles are excruciating the finish. You'll find Geneva Hallmark movements that have none of them. And yet this watch with more than I can count 
everything beautifully executed. What's on top of the bridges is satin finished. And then turn it all over, you can see a skeletonized and hand finished rotor in 22 karat gold. You can see mirrored englage on the edge of the bridges lighting up underneath my finger. All of this executed by hand. Now I should mention this is caliber 3132 automatic winding 45 hour power reserve ceramic rotor bearings bi-directional winding with stop seconds and a 21 6 beat rate. It features balance with free sprung gyromax architecture on both sides of the watch. So you can see how there's a balance on the case back with a full bridge and note where the stud holder is located. Note which side it's on as on the opposite side it's reversed. That's why you have two hairsprings. They are 180 degrees out of alignment. So if you think of positional variation in a watch, and you can see that on glage there, when the watch is laying on one side, one hairspring is going to cause its balance to run fast, the other is going to cause its hairspring to run slower. Having two of them 180 degrees out of alignment, they cancel each other out. So they give all the advantages of an overcoil, but with another advantage, with two enormous balances, and these are large balance wheels, you get an immense polar moment, an immense moment of inertia. So with a huge amount of inertia, it doesn't matter that the beat rate is 21.6. Instead, you have an enormous amount of mass fighting shock and vibration induced timing variation and that's why you want a massive balance wheel to shake off the effects of vibration and concussion on timing. This is as good as hand finishing in Le Bras Suguettes. The best Audemars Piguet offers in terms of finish, Renault Papi does no better. This is one of the rarest modern Royal Oak references. This is the open worked double balance, the 15407ST. And we're back with the Royal Oak 1507. 38 joules and adjusted in five positions like a chronometer, the highest standard of finish and technologically adept. You could see it even in the dark on the watch box.